What's up, guys? We are live here in the Paragon member support group. Hopefully, you can hear me. If you're tuning in, just hop on. We'll give people a minute here. If you hop on, just uh, type yes if you can hear me. Craig, can you hear me? Let me know. All right, we got Shannon in here. Awesome. Suzanne, Yvonne, Mike, what's up, guys? How we doing? I just want to make sure you guys can all hear me while you're on there. So just type yes, comment if you can hear me, and we'll get this thing going. Awesome, perfect. What's up, Ethan? Craig, coming in loud and clear. Good stuff. Good stuff. All righty. We'll give everybody a minute here. We get settled in. All right. Got Carrie. Hey, Shannon. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So hopefully everyone's having a good evening. I will uh, kind of just get things sort of loosely moving here so I don't keep you all night. So basically, uh, if you are in our member group and you saw this, I'm going to be doing a 12-week cutting phase, right? It's going to be dropping weight for the next 12 weeks or so starting this upcoming Monday. Um, and the point of this is I've been doing the strongman sport for three, four years now, and I've been putting on weight to be competitive in my sport. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm 6'4 and 280 pounds. <laughs> oh, TJ's here. What's up, TJ? <laughs> and uh, if, you guys are, if you guys are here, like the video. Let's see some likes, see some waves. Um, but yeah, so I'm a bigger dude, right? 6'4, 280, and in my sport, believe it or not, I'm actually one of the smallest guys that competes in my division. So I've uh, just been putting on weight to be more competitive, and this past year went really well. We went to nationals and all that. But I think it's time to, to trim down a little bit. So that's kind of the plan going forward for the next 12 weeks. So what I want to do tonight is kind of talk through what my plan is going to be to get this thing started. And then I want to share with you a humongous mistake that people make when they start a training program or a nutrition plan or, or both. So um, we'll just get right into it. So um, if you're just joining in, give us a like, give us a wave, say hey. Um, yeah, so Monday, I'll be starting my 12-week cut. So basically what this is going to consist of is three major things I'm focusing on, and this is all stuff that I focus on with my clients that I work with one-on-one. -on -one. So really the, the big three the basics, nutrition, my training, and my sleep. All right, so sleep I've got down pretty good. Um, you know, being a, a bigger guy, I use a, a CPAP uh, machine at night, so it's not the sexiest thing to wear, but it definitely helps. Um, and then on top of that, with the training, and so I'm sure a lot of you are curious about this, I'm going to be using uh, more of a bodybuilding style approach. So I'm going to have a five-day split, uh, kind of like an upper-lower split. And the reason for this, guys, is I put on a lot of muscle doing the strongman stuff, and I don't want to lose that, right? I need to keep my training pretty specific to my sport, right? And lifting weights is kind of the crux of what strongman is, right? So it's not as specific as doing the heavy carries and like stones and all that kind of stuff. But the best part about that bodybuilding type training or hypertrophy training as it's called, is it helps to maintain the muscle mass that's on your body or enhance it right through the training. So I'll actually probably take a screenshot of sort of what a week block of my programming is gonna look like, but I'm gonna start with that five day split. Okay, and how it's gonna work is I'm going to have probably three sets of each exercise to do, right? Like three sets of 10, that kind of thing. And then as the weeks go on, I'll be adding volume to that. So that might come in the form of added sets, added weight, added reps, all that kind of stuff to keep the change going as I go. All right. On top of that, kind of a newer hobby of mine is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I've got two days of training of that. So, so far I've got five weightlifting sessions and two Jiu Jitsu sessions that are going to kind of be the beginning of my training plan. So really not a whole lot is changing from what I'm doing already. Instead of doing the strongman specific stuff, I'm going to switch to more bodybuilding and then I'm keeping the jujitsu in place. And I'm going to get to why this is important in a second and why I'm not throwing the kitchen sink at myself come Monday. All right? I had a couple more people join in, I think. So hey guys, hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, so let's get into nutrition. Let's talk about that a little bit. So Basically, what I've got going on for my diet now is I'm going to keep things almost exactly the same as I normally would. I'm not changing all that much when Monday hits, okay? Um, the only major things that have changed is last week and this week, 
I started to kind of trial a new schedule for myself. So I started getting up earlier in the morning, doing my lifting in the morning, and then going to work, doing that whole thing. And then if I go to coach at night or jiu-jitsu at night or whatever, but it just ensures guys that I have those five days of lifting in my schedule, right? Evenings get crazy, you stay late at work, whatever the case may be. I don't wanna be stuck missing sessions, and this kind of guarantees that. So last week and this week were a, a great success in getting up early and getting the lifting done, so that's in. I am doing that for sure. As far as the food goes, I'm gonna stick with uh, about five meals is what I have a day. So it's gonna range from you know morning, uh, breakfast, two lunches, a dinner, and then usually like a late night meal after that. And each meal is gonna consist of about 40 grams of protein and then carbs and healthy fats. And those numbers are gonna vary as far as the carbs and healthy fats go um, based on how I'm progressing through this diet, right? So for me, there's a million different approaches you can take to your nutrition. For me, what I find works best uh, for me personally is counting my macros. I, I like that approach. I like how it's you know a little more precise than just sort of eyeballing stuff. Um, and I try to keep everything timed as well as I can. So what I mean by that is I'm eating every three hours or so, three and a half hours probably at most. I've got protein with every meal, so kind of an even distribution all day, right, which helps to keep that muscle tissue on your body, right? You don't want to go too long without that protein intake. And then I try to keep all my carbs right around my workout, okay? So for now, I'm lifting in the morning. Um, I'm going to have a bunch of carbs as soon as I'm done. I'm going to have my breakfast, I'm going to have my lunches, and then it's going to kind of taper off going into dinner and later in the evening. So that's kind of the plan. Um, and then some other things, other other obstacles and, and hurdles in the way um, are things you got to think about when, when you're changing your schedule and doing this. So I'm going from, you know, maybe like a 7 o'clock wake up to like a 5.30 wake up, coming in here, doing my lifting. Then I'm now showering at work. I'm going to be making my breakfast at work. So I've been eating my uh, microwaved eggs. So I apologize to all my coworkers. I see Suzanne's on here. Sorry for the, the egg stench in the office, but what can you do? Got to get it done. <laughs> so I've got that going on. Um, but then all my other meals and stuff I pack and prep on Sunday night anyway. So that's all, all good to go. Um, another thing. So something that maybe you guys don't know about me is that I have a hypothyroid. So that case makes weight, weight loss for me very difficult. So that'll be kind of uh, another element to this I'm going to have to work around. Um, and you guys will get to see that as I document this journey. So kind of the whole point of this, guys, is to show you kind of how I would do this and how I do it for myself and for my clients for you to follow along. If this is something that you want to do, you want to participate in this 12-week um, weight loss phase, I would love to have you along. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do probably a Facebook Live every week, all right? And that'll be my chance to give you an update and kind of show you what I've been doing, right? And you guys can comment on that. But also, too, we do the Win Wednesday every Wednesday. So hop in there and let us know what your weight's looking like. Um, if you're not making progress, we can always comment and help you out and keep it moving. Um, but I'll show you kind of how I'm structuring my stuff along the way, and hopefully that helps you as well. So... Um, there is a comment box here, guys. If you guys have questions along the way, you can ask. I'll stop at the end to do a Q&A, but uh, just keep that in mind because I want to make sure you get your, your questions answered here. So I want to get on to kind of the, the biggest mistake most people make when they start a training and nutrition plan. And this is something that I'm clearly trying to avoid with my plan, and I'm going to explain what that is now. And basically what happens is people decide, okay, I'm going to start dieting on Monday. I'm going to only eat chicken and broccoli. I'm not going to have any carbs. I'm going to work out for six hours a day. I'm going to do all this stuff, right? And they do it for a week, and then one of a couple things happens. They get burnt out because it just totally sucks, right? Or they might hurt themselves because they're just doing too much too soon. They're starving. It's just they're not able to tolerate such a drastic change so quickly. All right. And I know for myself, I'm not a very much like a cold turkey person. I kind of need a little bit of warm up time. Hence why I've taken the last two weeks to get my schedule squared away. Uh, this way, when I start on Monday, it's not that new to me. Right. It's something I've already been doing. So rather than throwing a ton of stuff at myself all at once, what have I really changed when I started this? Not a whole lot. Right. I'm still weight training. I'm probably going to get in one more session than I usually would. So 
no big deal there. And then I'm just eating breakfast in a different location. That's kind of like the only real big thing, right? Early wake up, eating somewhere different, not a big problem, right? The reason for this is if I try and throw everything at myself in the first week, not only would I might get burnt out, but let's say I'm able to stick with it, right? Let's say I'm able to actually sustain that kind of schedule with that kind of volume of work and like minimal food. Where can I go from there, right? It might work for two or three weeks tops. And then what do I do? If I have, if I play my whole hand of cards up front, I've got nowhere to go. So basically what I want to do, and this is what I would suggest for you guys to do, this is what I do with my clients, is we only play kind of one card at a time, right? So if you work with me, you definitely kind of know what I'm talking about is, okay, let's say we've got your diet all set up, you're eating your meals every week and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you snack on trail mix every week, right? For like after lunch, you have a trail mix snack. Rather than taking away all your carbs or all your healthy fats for the week, we just say, okay, let's just take away the trail mix this week and see if that doesn't change. All right, you lose some weight, great. You didn't, maybe let's up your cardio a little bit, right? You just kind of play one move at a time. So what you're gonna see here is every week when I check in, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I did last week, right? Cause you'll know from the previous week and then what I've changed this week to help keep things moving, all right? So hopefully some of you are gonna join along and do this. Um, and what I'd like for you to do, and I'm gonna kind of explain right now, is you need to set a goal for yourself, right? So my goal with this, in 12 weeks, my plan is to lose 20 pounds. So two zero, I'm gonna try and lose 20 pounds over that time. I'm gonna go from what I weighed in this morning was a svelte 281. I'm gonna try and get down to like 261, 260, somewhere in there. If I get anywhere beyond that, that's fine. I don't wanna go for any drastic weight loss. Uh, there's really no need for that. I wanna try and preserve the muscle I've put in my body. So I'm gonna take that sort of slow, like stair step approach and work my way down to 260 over the next 12 weeks. So that's pretty much it guys. I wanna make sure too, that just to kind of hammer home, that when you guys are starting your own plan, if you're not working with me or somebody else, that you are not, please do not throw the entire kitchen sink at yourself. Pick one thing to change, right? Make one move, see how it plays out for the week, maybe even two weeks. And if it doesn't work, all right, keep it there, add something else. Maybe we add a little more physical activity, right? Maybe we add you know, an extra cardio session each night or in the morning. Maybe we go for a walk after each meal. You know, For me, I have spots in my schedule where I know ahead of time already what I'm gonna add in when I need it. So I have a spot, let's say for instance, before I coach on Friday evening at 5.30, I've got from four to 5.30 wide open. I'm not touching that until I need it, but I might use it to throw in like CrossFit workout or something if I need to burn some extra calories. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. So I want you guys to set a goal for yourself. For me, it's 20 pounds in 12 weeks. Go through your schedule, figure out what you're gonna do. Keep it simple, don't do too much up front, right? And then find those pockets of time where you can add in little stuff eventually should you need it, all right? I've had plenty of clients where we've changed like one or two things in sort of their daily schedule and they've just trimmed down nice and easy. Right. For some of you, like myself, it's very difficult for me to lose body fat. Right? I, have a, I have an easy time putting on weight, getting big and strong, but losing it's very challenging for me. So in that case, I need to make sure I'm doing this in a very smart way, like in a, a scientific way as possible, and only kind of playing one piece at a time. All right. So that's kind of the main point for tonight, guys. Um, let's open it up to some Q&A. If anybody wants to comment any questions, we'll kind of just hang here and, uh, and answer what you got. I'm just going to get a drink of water. Don't mind me. All right, let's see here. Catching up with all the comments, guys. <laughs> Steph, what was your take on the mistake? We guessed wrong. Carry moderation, awesome. TJ, great question. So TJ asked, is a week enough time to tell if one thing you changed is working? And that's a great question. So uh, I guess it depends on what you're monitoring, right? In this case, it's my weight. For me, I'm going by the scale, for sure. My pace for losing weight, being, being a bigger guy, I can get away with probably two or three pounds a week. Um, so if I make one change and I, only, I didn't lose any weight, I really gotta see, did I really stick with it? If I didn't, then I'll give it another week. 
if I was super diligent and really dialed in, then yeah, I might make another another change for sure. If I'm not hitting that two pound mark. Let's see. Carrie, where do I weigh in? I've got a bathroom scale at home, and here's my advice on weighing in, guys. <laughs> uh, in general, here's what you should be doing. Wake up in the morning, use the bathroom, and then weigh yourself in as little clothing as humanly possible, right, in the comfort of your own bathroom. Please don't do it at the CrossFit Nassau scale where everybody can see you. So in your own bathroom, weigh yourself after you, uh, using the bathroom, and preferably on the same day every single week, okay, make sure it's very consistent. This way you have some good data. I actually have been recording my weight since July, like mid-July of like 2014. So I've, nerd, right? But I've got this graph of all my weight and all my, my peaks and troughs and I can see how I've like put on weight and where I've lost weight, where I've actually cut weight like pretty hard for competitions and that kind of stuff, and then where I've come back up again. So it's just data, guys. You just kind of want to keep a, keep a running log of that to see where uh, where things are going. What else we got? Let's see, Yvonne, sugar, sugar, how to cut back more? Yeah, great question. So here's the thing, guys. If you can stick to good whole foods, right, like less processed things, in general, we all know what that stuff is, right? The kind of the rule of thumb that I tell people here at the gym and clients I work with is two things. If it had parents or grew in the ground, you're probably okay, right? So if you're looking at a donut, didn't have parents or really grow in the ground, so maybe not a good idea. So you can keep those good whole foods. You're going to automatically start cutting down on sugar. Um, for me, I will have like more sugary type carbs closer to the workout because they're just easily digested. They get right back into my system. So if you guys ever finish like a, a CrossFit workout or even if you've gone on like a long run, you just feel really depleted, take in some, some orange juice. That's what I do. I mix orange juice with a little bit of dextrose powder and it absorbs right up and I feel great and I'm ready to go. I honestly feel like I could work out again. What else we got? Ethan, what is hypertrophy? So hypertrophy is uh, just you're uh, trying to grow the muscles on your body, right? So hypertrophy training would be like bodybuilding type training, which is you just trying to enhance the muscle mass that's on your body. Another question from Ethan. Why did you decide on 20 pounds? Um, I don't know. Just kind of sounded like a good number to me. I think 260 would be kind of a good spot to jump down to. Um, honestly, like, I feel like 20 pounds, one, is, is realistic, right? It's something I can attain in, in 12 weeks. You know, I'm pretty certain I can do it. I've done it before. Um, but also, too, I don't want to lose too, too much too fast, right? If I stick to about that two pound a week, um, that kind of two pound a week pace. I'm sitting at about 24 pounds. So 20 to me seems pretty good. Um, anything beyond that really guys, if you're kind of going beyond that sort of pace of like one to two pounds a week, you're going to start dipping into your muscle tissue and that's not what you want to do, right? You want to keep as much of that on your body as you can, not just for gym performance. Hey, Will, what's up dude? Um, but also just for like longevity, right? Like you might see elderly people just very weak, very frail. That's not what we want to be, right? We want to be kicking ass until our 80s. So that's kind of the goal there. Carrie, no photos. Come on, son. Yeah, I'll probably post photos. Um, <laughs> I'll probably do before picture and then I'll show it at the end just for like the shock value. We'll go with that. But, you know, shoot me a text, bro. I'm not looking at <laughs> All right, Yvonne. Wait, so eating sugar after workout is better than just randomly during the day? Yes, absolutely. And this is not, guys, we're not talking about like crushing, you know, pixie sticks and all that kind of crap. I'm drinking fructose, right, through the orange juice and dextrose powder, which is basically just powdered glucose, right? So right when you're done working out, like through the later in the workout and right at the end, your sensitivity to insulin is very high, right? The absorption rate back in your muscles is very high because you just depleted all the glycogen stores in your muscle. All the sugar stores that you have for energy, for like on-site usage, have all just been cleaved out to get you through that workout. So what should you do? You need to replace that, right? There's kind of the, uh, the old way was like, you gotta crush a protein shake right after, right? Like big dude at the gym's like, hey, you gotta crush a protein shake, right? On an iron journey, brother. Not the case anymore. Really what the science is showing is that you should be having carbs right after your workout. So that's what I do. Like I said, I go with 
the dextrose powder, and there's a brand called Now. It's like Now Real Foods. It's like a five-gallon tub, 10 bucks on Amazon. Can't beat it. A little bit of orange juice. Um, and the other two things I have with that is a little bit of salt. So like a half a teaspoon of salt, and then maybe less than that, and then a caffeine tablet. And what that does is it increases the absorption by like four times. So I'll finish my workout here. I'll have a caffeine tab and just start sipping on that stuff. And honestly, you feel great. You feel like euphoric and you feel restored and ready to go uh, for your next session. We got some more comments here. Yeah, so Yvonne, so to follow up with yours, you said that's usually when you crave it the most. Then in that case, um, I would do a drink similar to what I have. Um, and I can help you kind of figure out the, the ratios and everything, but it's more for like a, just a post-workout type deal. Other than that, you want to kind of get back onto those if it had parents grew in the ground type thing. TJ with the come on son. Will, great question. Any tips for those last few stubborn pounds? Yes. <laughs> so um, we just want to keep it simple, guys, right? So if you are eating well, if you're working out, and you're getting your sleep. If those three are in line, right, you need to start going back through each one and trying to find the gaps and where you can optimize or add on to them, right? So it should never be a case of like, all right, I'm just gonna cut calories and cut calories and cut calories until I lose that little last little bit of weight because what's gonna happen when you're done, right? You're gonna start dieting back up and it's gonna come back on, right? And you're just gonna kinda keep playing that game to get frustrated enough to come back down again. So what I would say is um, increase your activity for sure. Um, I like this in the way of like, let's say if you can't get to the gym anymore, right? You've kind of maxed out your gym time. Post meal walks are awesome. 10 minutes, just if you finish eating, get up and go walk around. 10 minutes, that's all it is. And what does that do? It's gonna help with your digestion, keeps your metabolism running hot, and it's gonna increase your insulin sensitivity. So your ability to absorb and utilize the nutrients just took in is much better off than if you're just gonna sit there and like loaf around. So I would, I would do that well, and then I'd also evaluate kind of what is your training like, right? Are you really doing enough to kind of push the pace and, and get those calories burned out, which, which we can talk about when I, I see you this week. <clears throat> Brian, what's up, dude? When it comes to dieting, is it bad to cut out snacks altogether and just have three to five decent meals? Great question. So for me, like <clears throat> I would start with the square meals, right? Try and have like for you, Brian, like you're a bigger dude like me, probably three, four meals, probably four somewhere is good for you, right? Um, but if you find that you're really hungry, you can start adding in snacks. For this kind of stuff, like just some cut up veggies, a piece of fruit goes a very long way. Um, but if you're eating that protein with each meal, guys, it should keep you satiated till about the next meal again. So if that try that, Brian, if that's giving you any trouble, I can I can help you with that too. TJ, can we see that impression again? Maybe, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Ethan recommends a post-workout drink. That is right. Craig, is that mixture good for bonking? Uh, yeah, you could sip a little bit of it on your way to the gym, but I would just wanna see kind of what you're doing prior to coming into training. So. You know, if you're eating lunch at noon, guys, and you're going to train at 6.30, you got to have something in between. And then going back to Brian's question, this is kind of where a snack would fit right in. So, um, hey, guys, if you're just joining in, give the video a like. Ahmed, Jess, what's up? Good to see you guys. Awesome, awesome. Just scrolling through some more questions here. All right, TJ's got one. So walking around, right, does, uh, let's see, does that include just moving around the house? cleaning the kitchen, cleaning up after the kids, boring stuff. Yeah, that's great. I mean, ideally, like if I know where, I, I know where you live, right? You got a nice cul-de-sac there. You could just probably walk a couple laps and be done. Um, but any activity is great, guys, right? And they've actually done studies on this. The, the further you get into a diet, if you are uh, really restricting your calories, you tend to fidget less. You'll actually sit down more. Right. And your body's just kind of taking like instincts taken over and it knows, hey, I'm not getting the calories in that I need. So I'm going to sit here and just kind of reserve my energy for when I really need it. So kind of the point of the, the 10 minute walk post meal is that it's going to help you keep the activity up throughout the day. Um, I mean, it's got a ton of benefits anyway, but if nothing else, Tej, like, yeah, definitely walk around the house, you know, 
walk up the stairs, walk back down the stairs, just, you know, carry the laundry upstairs and bring it back down, whatever you got to do. But just a few minutes of activity right after you eat goes a real long way for sure. Ethan, how much weight have you cut in the past? Do you use a similar approach? Great question. So just to recap, I'm 280, 281 right now. Um, I've gotten down as low as 220 for uh, Olympic weightlifting competitions. Um, that was like probably 2014-ish. Um, and that got pretty pretty real. <laughs> I had found myself found myself on a step mill like in a like Planet Fitness or whatever at 5 a.m. for with a hoodie on for like months until I could cut that last little bit of weight. Um, and that I think was a drop from like 250 to 220. So and that was and that was about 12 weeks. That was pretty aggressive, but that was for a competition. And there was a bit of a water cut at the end. So I would say probably the most I've ever done in a given, uh, like in one go, like 12 weeks or so, is about 30 pounds. Um, but I've done smaller ones of like 10 pounds, and I've done right in the middle of like 20, which is what I'm going to do this time. So the approach I take to that, and actually, guys, my my approach to nutrition and like working with my clients and stuff has evolved a lot a lot over the last three years i can't even tell you like if you if you're doing something similar you're like in a hobby or whatever if you don't look back at what you did three years ago and you're not like a little embarrassed then you're probably not getting any better right so i'm very happy with where things have come to but the approach in general is still the same so i'll be doing my training right which is very similar to what i did in the past um not as sport specific right just because i'm just trying to lose weight and maintain muscle not necessarily do all strongman stuff um but the diet approach is the same, right? Kind of playing that one card at a time. Um, I'm not I'm not really big on like any of the fad diets, like keto is real popular right now. Not really smart for what I do. Um, if you're in here and you're a CrossFitter, definitely not a good idea, um, just because you run on glycogen, so you want to make sure you're having those carbs coming in. But um, yeah, I would say the approach is pretty much the same. It's really, it's just the basics, guys, right? It's eating good whole foods. It's training with weights, like heavy weights, um, and then just making sure I'm getting quality sleep. That's kind of like topping it all off. So yeah, cool. Any other questions we got in here? You guys feel free to post them. I'm just kind of going through my my checklist here. So definitely, guys. I mean, this having this group so far has been incredible. Like it's been really awesome, and I love helping you guys. Um, so I hope you join me in this 12 week. Uh, weight cut thing. I said weight cut's probably a bad way to say it, but weight loss phase. Um, I'll be like I said, I'll be posting my progress along the way each week, most likely in a Facebook Live. This seems to be a good format. This way, you guys can ask questions and whatnot. Um, and then we'll just go from there. TJ, how much sleep? Great question. And I know you are a father of three, and you probably could use all the sleep you can get. Ideally, guys, as far as sleep goes. You're going to be sitting at about probably eight hours, right? Kind of the usual prescription. Um, but you want to make sure, if you can, to your best of your ability, is you're sticking with the natural circadian rhythms, right? So you're getting in bed about 10:30. You wake up around 6, 6:30, somewhere in there. That's kind of the optimal window. If you're getting to bed after midnight, that's a real problem. You want to try and get to bed before midnight. The effect of getting to bed before midnight, it's almost like every hour you get to bed before midnight is like having two hours in the bank. So I would definitely recommend trying and staying in that 10.30 to 6, 6.30 a.m. range and then being very consistent with that. Um, goes a very long way. Carrie, how important is sleep? It is the most important. It is so super important. I can't even tell you. There's so many times I've worked with people and they're, they'll tell me like, Joe, I follow my keto diet and I drink my kombucha tea every day. And I'm like, all right, well, how much, you're not losing weight. How much do you sleep? And they're like four hours. It's like, dude, you're, you're stepping over hundred dollar bills to pick up nickels. Like you have to get your sleep in. I can't stress it enough, especially like, you know, if you're the hormonal function that comes with sleeping huge, not just the rest and recovery for your muscles, but your brain, your hormones, all that stuff. So if you're not prioritizing your sleep, guys, you have to hop on that for sure. Can't stress it enough. Jody, awesome question. I'm glad you brought this up because I totally forgot <laughs> to make a note of this. Will I be traveling for work? And if so, any tips? Yeah, great question. So here's the thing. This 12 weeks, guys, it, to me, is the best time to do this. 
because I have a lot of trips coming up. <laughs> so because of that, it gives me a chance to show you how you can handle it while you're traveling. Where most people would say, well, I've got this trip coming up in like six weeks, so I won't start dieting until I get back. And you just kind of keep pushing up. For me, I'm welcoming the challenge. Um, one, because it's challenging and I want to do it, right? I'm kind of doing this for myself. I want to lose some weight. But at the same time, too, is it's a learning opportunity for you guys. So if there is something that, like if you guys want to see maybe like a, a picture documentation of what I was eating while I was traveling, like, hey, I'm in, in the airport right now. Here's what I'm picking up to eat or whatever. I'm more than happy to post in the group and, and share that with you guys for sure. Absolutely. As far as the tips go, Jody, for, um, for travel, I feel like nowadays more than ever, this stuff's just kind of almost getting easier, right? Like every airport's got at least one place that has some healthy stuff, right? Like if you're traveling for work and you're renting a car, right? You're with a coworker and you got a car you can rent and drive around. I mean, every town's got a supermarket, right? You can go there and they usually have like a hot cold bar. You can get a salad or even just some like protein bars to throw in your bag or something like that. Uh, for me, I like traveling, I like beef jerky. So I'll take a lot of that with me. Um, protein bars are good too. And then I try to like basically raid the hotel breakfast in the morning of like a lot of their fruit and stuff. So I'll take like a few bananas and a couple apples and just chuck them in the bag and uh, take that with me for the day. Also too, um, as far as travel goes guys, hydration. Like you should be drinking a lot of water while you travel. People tend to forget to do that. So um, just make sure you're staying on top of it. Cool. All right. Yvonne wants the food snaps. I will, I will send foods. <laughs> I'll send food pics. Awesome guys. Well, I think that's pretty much it for tonight. Um, let's see. We went through basically everything, right? We went through kind of what I'm going to be doing over the next 12 weeks, more or less, um, which I'll be sharing some more detail with you as, as the weeks go on. Um, and then just the big takeaway, right, is make sure you're only playing one card at a time, right? Don't make a ton of change up front. Just go very simple, right? One thing at a time. And if you find that you're stagnant, you're not making the change that you want to make, then um, play the next card. Play the next card. And you'll be good to go. All right. If any of you are interested in joining me on this, but you're like not sure where to start or whatever, just need some more advice, shoot me a direct message on Facebook, guys. I'm more than happy to help you out. And that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for attending. This is really cool. I can't wait to do the next one. And we'll talk to you all soon. All right. Have a great one. Bye.